Orlando will forever have a special place in my heart. Shaq finally got his jersey retired by the Orlando Magic, a day we thought would never happen. As it turns out, neither did Shaq. I wanted my name to be up there. Orlando, me playing four, here, playing here four years, going to the finals once, going to the ring of ceremony and that being it, and nobody else having their jersey retired. I never thought this day would happen. It means a lot. It's a lot of pl great players that, that played here. It's not just that his tenure with the Magic ended with some bad blood. This was a pretty new franchise and he wanted more money. The Magic gave him a low ball offer, so the Lakers swooped in to sign him. Shaq won three titles and the Magic spent a decade in mediocrity. It's not just that. The Magic have retired zero jerseys in franchise history. Until Shaq, it was just Bill Russell's number six, which is retired league wide. The Magic haven't retired Hall of Famer Tracy McGrady's jersey. They haven't retired Penny Hardaway's. And they haven't retired Dwight Howard's. Though we'll probably wait a long time for that last one to happen. To have his Magic jersey retired is a huge honor for Shaq, who has clearly moved past the offensively low offer and is happy to celebrate his time with Orlando. That being said, just how good was Orlando Shaq? Frankly, a lot of people might just not know that Shaq started his career with the Magic. When a casual fan thinks of Shaq, they think of the Lakers or Heat, or maybe that embarrassing old man charge he took in year 19 with Boston. When younger people think of Shaq, they think of the goofy guy on TNT or the dude from the bad insurance commercials. But Shaq started his career in 1992 when he was drafted number one by the Orlando Magic, the most hyped rookie of the 1990s. Shaq was absolutely dominant in his three years at LSU. In his final two years, he averaged 26 points, 14 boards, and 5.1 blocks per game. He led the SEC three years in a row in blocks per game, first in career blocks per game. He was All-American twice, including a 91 AP Player of the Year award. Especially for that era, you could not have asked for a better prospect. If you're talking about the highest rated prospects of all time, Shaq is on a short list with Kareem, Ralph Sampson, Tim Duncan, LeBron James, and Victor Wembanyama. In his rookie year, Shaq absolutely delivered. 23 points, 14 boards, and 3.5 blocks per game as a rookie. For context, no one in the NBA has averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds, and three blocks per game since 2000, and Shaq blew those numbers out of the water as a rookie. To be fair, Wemby is about to join that list this year. Shaq was the runaway rookie of the year, getting all but two first place votes. Those two voters picked Alonzo Mourning, who went number two in the same draft. Shaq made a point of dominating Zoe every time they matched up from then on, and it got heated. Shaq may act like it's all fun and games, but you dare call him second best and he will set the league on fire. The two only made up in the mid-2000s when they played together on the 2006 Champion Heat team. In his rookie season, in a pretty loaded 1993 year, he finished 7th in MVP voting. 7th as a rookie. A team that only won 21 games the year before went 500 with Shaq, and it only went up from there. When people talk about the most dominant forces in league history, the conversation pretty much starts and ends with Shaquille O'Neal. He was 7 foot 1, 300 pounds in his magic days, and in those years he wasn't carrying the same fat that he was in Los Angeles. Just in terms of sheer strength, he had no rivals. There was no way to stop him one on one. He was literally refereed differently because there was just no way to guard him without fouling him. But that's only half the battle. To be that size and be that light footed is just impossible. But he did it. He had perfect touch around the rim. Whether he slammed it on your head or finished with a perfect post move was just up to his whims. His three and a half blocks per game as a rookie were a career high, but that's just because he became smarter defensively. It's not all about swatting shots if you're giving up points the other 20 times because you're so obsessed with getting the blindside block. I mean, just look at Hassan Whiteside. And that might be Shaq's most underrated quality. He's so smart when it comes to the game of basketball. 
The Big Aristotle isn't a completely ironic nickname. With the magic, a lot of people want to say that this was Shaq's raw talent era. When he was just a physical specimen who didn't have the basketball IQ he had with the Lakers. But raw talent doesn't bring you to the NBA Finals. That's right, a team that had zero playoff appearances before Shaq made the Finals by year three. This was in 1995, which was Jordan's baseball hiatus, right? There were no Bulls to deal with, so winning the East wasn't quite as impressive, right? Wrong. Jordan came back mid-season in 1995, just in time for the playoffs. Shaq and the Magic met Jordan's Bulls in the second round, and Shaq won. Only one team beat Michael Jordan in the playoffs from 1991 to 1998, and that was Shaq's Magic team. Not the only time Shaq humbled the GOAT. They snuck past the Pacers in the conference finals, facing off against Hakeem and the Rockets for the 1995 NBA championship. Shaq was outplayed by Hakeem, but 28 points, 13 boards, 6 assists per game against the best center of the 90s? Not half bad and better than what Ewing did the year before. Forget the fact that Shaq was swept. Just getting to those finals should earn Shaq half a ring, right? Sort of like LeBron's 2007 finals run. But unlike Bron, Shaq wasn't completely alone on that team. Who is the best player Shaq ever played with? He played with Kobe and Wade before their true primes. He played with LeBron and Steve Nash way after his own prime. He played with Kevin Garnett when they were both shells of themselves. The right answer is definitely Kobe, but it could have been, should have been, Penny Hardaway. When you're talking about sure things from the 1990s, guaranteed rookies who would thrive in the NBA, the top three names are Shaq, Duncan, and Chris Webber. C. Webb was the number one pick in 1993, the year after Shaq. And miraculously, the Magic had that pick. You really couldn't pick a better power forward to pair with Shaq. Both were physically gifted and great passers. Though C. Webb could stretch the floor much better. And just imagine how tough it would be to grab a rebound on that team. But instead of creating the greatest twin towers the NBA has ever seen, the Magic swapped Weber for the number three pick, Penny Hardaway. Was this the right decision? C Webb ended up being a disappointing head case for a long time, and then when that stopped, he was just a choker with injury concerns. Did the Magic see this coming, or were they just obsessed with turning Penny and Shaq into the next Stockton and Malone? Penny finished second in Rookie of the Year voting in 1994, already the second best player on a franchise that just made its first playoff appearance. He was a gifted athlete, a natural scorer, who was smart enough to transition into a point guard. He was 6'7 in running the point. Nowadays, that's not so weird, because positions just don't matter, but back then, it was basically just him and Shaq. Not a bad list to be on. By his second season, Penny was first team All-NBA and a point guard on the finals contender. In 96, he was third in MVP voting, higher than Shaq. Penny was a guaranteed 21, 6, and 6 on good percentages every single night. After that 1996 season, Shaq left for the Lakers, and as soon as that happened, Penny was alone, and the injuries started to rack up. By 98, Penny only played 19 games. After that, his career was basically done by 27. You can't tell the story of Orlando Shaq without bringing up the tragedy of Penny Hardaway. There is a universe out there where Orlando pays Shaq what he deserves. He ended up being the most dominant player of the Y2K era when the size, athleticism, IQ, and effort all aligned. There's a universe where Penny Hardaway stays healthy on that dominant Shaq team, and there's a universe where the Magic hoist a finals trophy or two. Just look at the East Finals teams post-Jordan from 1999 to 2003. A Knicks team who lost their best player mid-playoffs. A Pacers team that wasn't even Reggie Miller's best season. A Sixers team with an offense that was literally just Allen Iverson and a couple underrated J-Kid teams that had no business playing in the NBA Finals. How many of these spots go to the Magic if Shaq stayed? More importantly, 
Is he the best player in franchise history anyway? Shaq only played four years in Orlando, compared to Dwight Howard's eight. They both went to one finals. Shaq had a scoring title. Dwight had three Defensive Player of the Year awards. Dwight's got the longevity over Shaq. The Magic let bygones be bygones with Shaq. A couple decades later. But you gotta imagine that's not really happening with Dwight anytime soon. But what do you think? Is Shaq the best player in franchise history? Or is it Dwight Howard? Let us know in the comments, then watch one of these videos next. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.